Okay, so we're um, we're uh, here in Pioneer at the show, at the big house show, and I've been asked to tie a fly um, for you guys here. And I've been thinking either to do, I could do one of my favorite flies, Patagorba fly, uh, but you know, that's a little dull in color, and uh, it's got a, a wing, only one colored wing. Uh, I was thinking of doing the yellow white wing, it will be looking nice to the camera, but but I won't tie that either. I'll, I'll decided to tie a new pattern. This is uh, a fly uh, with uh, several wings. I will add a few techniques on this and I think hopefully it will show a lot of uh, my techniques and things I think is important. So enough talk, start tying. And uh, of course I will work with uh, my own uh, fits tubing system and uh, the system consists of four different diameters where I'm now uh, going to use the medium and extra small setup where I've decided I will use uh, medium fire orange and I, when I open these bags I do the really hold there so easy way of just taking what you want okay and um, the thing now is when when I do this first I decide the size of the fly and the size will be at least twice the size of the medium tubing the good thing with the fit system is that now you can decide color in the front and color uh, on the rear end or the body and you're not fixed like you are on, on the system's copying what I've done. Okay, first thing I do is I cut this uh, at an angle like this. Just take away a little piece of the plastic. And this, this it took me some years to understand that if I do this and I put in the extra small in there, what happening is that when I put the tying thread on, these are gonna be fixed. Fantastic, without any glue or anything. Put them on the fits needle with the four different di diameters for the system. I use the white uh, tying thread. I prefer the Benetti 12 o Okay, put on a little bit of thread and go up with the thread over the part where I'm, that I cut away on the medium. This will take uh, the medium and it will squeeze it together around the extra small sounds like I'm a genius but I, I must say I found this out just because I wanted to take away that little part to make it smooth the Taiwan fly but here we go this is how I found out the the way to do this embarrassing maybe it took 25,000 flies to figure it out but. okay uh, then I will use a Mirage material I use the salt water flash boo and uh, that's one of the reasons I use a white thread because now when I take this and I'll uh, tie this in underneath when I do this over the white thread the thread is not seen through the mirage not even when it gets wet okay Cut it away. When I cut away pieces like this of material, I try not to cut it too close. Cut it a little bit away from the and leave a little bit because it doesn't really matter. It it won't be in the way for the rest of the material. It won't be seen, but it makes it impossible for it to slip. Okay. Fluorofiber, fantastic material. Very hot fluorescent. I'll take this, I tie it in, take half as much material as I want, tie it in with a few turns like this and double it back. I'll try to double all synthetic materials. It's because now it can't slip. Very, very good. I mean, you, who wants to tie a fly where half of the material is, is gone after first fish? A good fly should be inherited in generations you know it should be very durable to make this now uh, 
instead of cutting this off, I'll put the scissors underneath and I pull and cut. By doing this, I will taper this and I can make a very good looking smooth tail on the fly like this. I, sometimes I have to do it one or two times more, but this looks good, so I'll leave it there. Okay, then we come to braid. And uh, uh, those of you who tie a lot of flies know that I've been, been taking, uh, uh, I've been making a new system of synthetic materials called SSS, Sailor Synthetic Series. And um, these are samples on something everybody now is waiting for. It's the new braid that hopefully it'll come on a little plastic like this so no spools or no tangles no problems it'll be fantastic uh, it's not here yet but i have a few of the samples i'm going to tie with the samples and first i tie in a gold one that is going to be my ribbing then i tie in the one that's called uh, uh, orange in flames the fluorescent part, the fly we're tying is called orange in flames or in flames only, short name. And I do this now, I make sure I covered tying thread. Very important, so there's no tying thread seen here. And I make this grow. Just tie it tightly, pull it down, and make this part a little bit longer than what I wanted. This is now, and once again, don't cut too close, okay? And this, once again, is the third section of the body, because the reason I started with fluorescent tubes was to, in, to, to, to get the tube to be part of the body, so here, or part of the pattern. So here we have the orange, we have the mirage, and we have the fluorescent braid. And now we're doing the dubbing, which is I always end up a body with a dubbing to make it grow. You want the fly to be drop formed where you have the heavy part and it's getting narrow backwards. Like that. That's why I don't do them in a different order. SSS, this is hot orange in flames. The ones called hot orange in flames. It's the ones that have these fluorescent, tiny small fluorescent parts. And uh, the good thing with the, with the SSS is also it's got very long fibers, which means when I tie this in, uh, I can brush it out. Sometimes you see people tie flies with dubbing and dub bodies and they don't brush it. And then it's, it's ridiculous. The reason for using dubbing is to brush it. So tie this in and now you have to remember that you have to overdo this. You have to overdress it because it should be brushed. It, when, it's, when it's ready and brushed, it should look good. Okay. Never use wax. People ask me when I dub, it looks so easy. Why don't you, do you, don't, do you have wax on your thread? And I never do that. I'll just spin my fingers, take them, spin them hard one way like this not back and forth one way okay i i'm spinning the material onto the thread which means when i take it and put it on it can't be too many fibers because then they don't get in contact with the thread few fibers spin it one way and hard and back and forth very simple and no wax the reason I'm not using wax is that wax normally have a melting point about 50 Celsius, which means if you tie this fly with wax and you know, on a sunny day like today, you leave your fly boxes in the car, you know what's gonna happen? It's gonna be warmer than the melting point for the wax, which means it will melt and it will go away from the fly. And you know what's gonna happen when the Wax is gone, the dubbing will disappear. So, okay. This looks fat and it looks overdressed, but it should look like that. But you can also see now some of these long fibers are, are, are pointing out like this. And you wait what's, how it's gonna be 
after we brush it. But first, a hackle. I use an orange dyed cochlean. I like the cochleons. It's good quality hackle. Strip it off, pick the right size, tie it in underneath like this. The reason I put it underneath is of course that on the top here we're gonna have a big wing consisting of a lot of material so there's not gonna be enough room there but underneath this is the only thing I do. Instead of now just winding this backwards like this I always start with one turn here. The reason for that is that now I get a lot of fibers in the front and I want the fly to be heavier in the front. I want the drop form, I want the bulkier part in the front and I want it to be tapering off. Okay, this is a little trick now. I used to use the thinner braids and one of the reasons behind uh, the SSS braid was to find a braid that was usable for everything. What I do is instead of using the very fragile thumb braids, I use this SSS thicker one and I spin it. And here I can use the same braid quality that I use for the body as a ribbing. I can use it on a big fly or a small fly. If I use it on a small fly, I just twin it a little harder and it becomes narrower. Okay, always end up underneath like this. Okay, few turns. And this way, what I've done now, I put this braid on. I'm, I'm winding my hacker one way and I'm winding the braid the opposite way, crossing every turn. Which means that if this now, this feather will break here, what's gonna happen is it's, it's, it's not gonna be unwind. The fly won't be disturbed, destroyed. So here I do, I'll move my thread over here and instead of cutting this, I'll double this backwards. The reason for that is of course, that I don't want the braid or the ribbing to slip then the fly will be destroyed. Okay, this is a little Velcro brush. And here, I now change this boring body to something completely different. Now you can see how the fibers, all the SSS dubbings consist of five different uh, colors on the most translucent fiber ever used in a dubbing. Okay, this is gonna be a colorful fly. I will uh, move over uh, to uh, uh, SSS Angular HD, which was uh, uh, one of the materials that, one of the, the materials I had an idea to do, and that is that I wanted a material that was not as heavy as flashable, and a little bit heavier than angel hair. So it turned out to be this angel hair HD. Okay, I'll use this um, hot orange in flames. Hot saying it's got the fluorescent fibers and I, I tie this in short. One turn, press down on the sides. I want these thin short ones to be seen on the side of the wing before I double it back. Always double, okay? And then I don't cut it off like this, I taper. If I taper, the strands will have different length like this. And when they get wet, they will not come together like this and stay together. One will be longer and move apart like this, and it will be strands that will move in the water a lot better. Okay, I'm gonna do a wing now with three different colors, but I'm gonna put on four different bunches of hair. And I start with uh, an orange one. Always start with the lightest color in the bottom, 
but I also start, always start with the shortest bunch of hair in the bottom. What I do here is that I take my little Velcro brush and you look at this, it doesn't look very sexy, but if I do this, look, I'll brush it through and untangle this. Suddenly this way, it's like I, I'm, this little bunch of hair is coming alive. And just untangling it, I will make a wing that will move a lot better and also a wing that is easier to tie in the right way. Here what I do is that I put my fingers up half the way and I want this to be tapered. So I'll pull a few to pull out a few strands to make a wing tapered. Yes. So I'm not tapering only by putting in longer and longer bunches, but I taper the first wing. Okay. So how many fish will have a look at from here? How many fish will come up and have a look like this? It's ridiculous. The whole idea of the fly tying vice is ridiculous because we see the fly from the side. The fish will see the fly from underneath like this. Which means we've got to remember that when we when we tie the fly, we get, it's got to be tied from the fish perspective, and not from the fisherman. So we should really tie it the other way, but it's too complicated. So remind you, the fish sees it underneath like this, which means what's happening in this perspective is not seen by the fish, but what's happening here. That's the important thing. That's why I hold my wing wide between the fingers like this when I put it in and use half of the di diameter of the tubing put it in move away my fingers put my thumbnail and press it down on the sides and put on a few more making this very wide now if I look it's this high maybe but what you can't see if I twist it it's this wide. That's what you want. You want because it's that motion the fish will see. Okay, cut it off. Also remember now to put all this material on top of each other. It's very easy when you tie a fly with a lot of wings that they are coming in front of each other a little bit. And that way there's going to be tying thread seen underneath and the fly will be no good. Okay, I do a little bit more of SSS, do uh, the hot orange in flames angel hair quality, which is the thinner one. Uh, I need another strand of fluorescent here. Okay, here we go. Take a few strands like this, tie them in, put them in, make sure they're wide, one turn and double them back. Always double all synthetic material and always taper them like that. That wants to be there, I know it. Okay, I then take another piece of orange. Here I use a uh, longer hair and also it's like this that the, the second bunch of hair is always thinner. First hair bunch is the biggest the higher up I'm coming the smaller they are brushing through you see what happened it'll be moving like that fantastic you can use any kind of hair as long as it's soft enough and taper it off a little bit to make few strands here put it on wide make sure this now is longer even have to move my fingers a little bit to make this longer, okay? Wide and tie it in. Press it down on the sides using half the diameter of the tubing. Okay. Okay, looking good, but we need a little contrast here. So what I do, I now I'll pick uh, one of my favorite colors. It's got the name from one of my favorite rivers, the Alta. 
and it's called Alta Gold. It's a very dark gold color, but remember now this has also got a little bit of copper inside of it. Uh, it's a, a very, very nice color combination, I think. Put them on and double them, same as before, okay? And taper. Okay, and one good way of finding out if the wing is good is to feel it. It should be thick here and you should see it's, it's getting narrower and narrower and got few strands here. Here I can see I have an angular strand too long. Okay, this is gonna be a good fly. Somebody said when I took this out, that's a bit gay, but I don't know. This is a, a bit crazy maybe, but I use a little bit of magenta and put that on top of the orange. And uh, what I do here, treat it the same way, but I'll do, I just make this helping this fly to be, uh, to have the, the good drop form where uh, this is gonna be only half the length. A little bit tapered though, but only half the length of the wing like that. Tie it in, make sure it's down on the sides. Spread over the orange. And that it looks good. Looks very good. Okay, normally on most of these uh, flies that I call octopusy style, I'll have uh, a few hurls and a little bit of angel hair on top. But on this one, what I do is that I'll take just one or two strands of the nasty rusty, the same color that I do the, here we go, that I do together with the, the hurls. I was way too many. Okay. Put in one or two. Just twist them back. And now I'll take a little bit black and I'll take a very well tapered hair. This might be difficult for you to see against my black uh, little vest here, but uh, we'll see. And uh, this is going to be few strands and it got to be very well tapered, very few. And normally I spread them a lot, but this I want to be like a little bit of a roof, like this. This is very well tapered, it's a little bit stiffer, which means I'll, I'll bend it a little bit like that to make it uh, form together with the wing. Let's see so I don't taper it too much. That'll be perfect. Okay. Cut it off. I have to let it stay a little bit like that. And then we go on the jungle cup. I've said it a million times. You can't catch any fish without jungle cock. It's just impossible. Or what do you think? Jungle cock is something, now let's be serious, because jungle cock is something we're putting on because of the fly tire or the fisherman. The fish doesn't give a shit. I've been just telling you that the fish sees the fly from underneath and here I put the jungle cock on the side, which is pretty obvious. It's, it's not got nothing to do with the fish. It's only the fisherman. But that's important too. I like my flies to look nice. That's why I like jungle cock. I'll tie this in long. I always start with the one closest to me. Tie it in long, as long as it stretches over to at least as long as the uh, as the tubing is. Always starting with the one on my side here, which means I cannot twist it. Look from above and tie it in. This way, I know this is going to be in the right place. Okay? Gotta be lucky too. Or maybe have a little experience, who knows? 
Okay, uh, hackles. I'm gonna hackle this like I hackle my octopus supplies, which means it's gonna be hackled with, the, where are all these fantastic feathers? Here we go. With ostrich, and uh, I will use two colors of the ostrich, and it's uh, ostrich body feathers, small feathers, and uh, I will start with the orange one. These are fantastic. Uh, I'll, uh, I can say I was the one that started using those. And the thing is that they are more durable than any heron hackle. Here we go. And they are very, they swim a lot. You could see, uh, they just blow this a little bit. It's just fantastic. Okay, when I tie this in, I'm gonna use two different feathers, which means I'm gonna have two turns of the ostrich is perfect, which means instead of doing one turn each color, I do two turns with half a feather. I look at the feather and I strip one side. And you think, God, he's destroying that good looking feather. And yep, I do, because I prefer to do it this way, it's easier and it makes it better looking or better and a better fishing fly create that little triangle that triangle is what i tie in okay now it's i usually talk about doubling hackles and things like this here you don't need to double this you just um, have one side here i now put a little bit of glue on and the glue should be put on right on where the, the wing is attached. I leave this one or two or three seconds, then I need to take away what's not going into the fly and I do this, I take this, just any little piece of, of uh, feather or garbage and just take it away. Okay, with this feather, I can use any side, but what decides is, you can see they're always a little bit different in length, and I always keep the good one and throw away the bad one. Here, I'll do this, take away the same side. Sometimes it's better to do opposite sides, but this was better. Okay, take it like that. Cut away, create a little triangle, and tie it in. Remember now, I'm still tying on the medium tubing. Here, what I do, oops, I want these to be one side, come on now. And uh, I'll take this, and I'll do the two turns, one. And it's very simple now, because they don't uh, I don't have to double it. And then I go down with the second turn onto the black tubing, okay? Onto this thin tubing. Tie it in. Cut it away. Make sure it's even. Does it look good? I think it'll be good. I have to feel it sometimes talk to it see that it's good looking good I think now what I do I add to get a little contrast I add a black soft tackle two turns two turns it's about two centimeters okay so I take away and create a little triangle on this one too oops cut everything away like that tie it in now I have to double it, and to double the hackle is, can be tricky, but I have this little trick, what I do, I use three fingers, I do a little triangle where I let the tube come in between my three fingers and I just hold back what I'm not, uh, I hold back on the piece of the feather that I'm winding on, it looks like this, very simple, Chips. One, hold it back, chips, and two. 
If I think it's enough and I, I picked a little bit too long, I just take that off before I tie this in. Making sure it's even. This is good. I tell you, this would be bloody good. Untangle the fibers a little bit with my scissors, just seeing that they look good. And I get a little bit of the black to come in over the over the ostrich like that. Very nice. I want to add a little one more little thing and that's one thing that's getting more and more popular and that is rubber legs and I do a version here where I put on two rubber legs after the wing is ready I think rubber legs I use rubber legs a lot on my sea trout flies not as much on my salmon flies but on some I think they're good because I think they vibrate and I think they create sound. And come on, the fish most important sense is not their sight or anything else, but they, the organ they have on the side, which takes up vibrations, which is sound. So that's why I do this. I tie in two like this and tie in a few tough turns like this. Look at it and adjust it so I get them to be even. One thing that is important with the fly is that it balances and the wing is what steers the fly. But I never ever want the longest parts underneath. So what I do, I take these and I cut them off. So they're a bit shorter than this, but they will still vibrate and they will create sound okay a cone where are the cones here we go on this one i decided uh, i will use uh, a small fits of course my system is called fits because everything fits together uh, i can also brag a little bit about this was my idea and it was so stupid because we tried to tie flies with as small heads as possible but the best fishing flies have a big head because what happens is that the water hits this disc and it creates a turbulent stream turbulence means that this soft material will swim that's the reason i can use these super soft tackles and soft uh, ostrich hackles for a fly that I can swim in the fastest river, okay, fastest stream. So I do this this way, and it's basic physics. And the physical law says is if you take the diameter here and you multiply it by 10, you get the length of the turbulent stream, which means eight millimeter, eight centimeters back, which is maybe about here somewhere. That's the place where the stream will come together like this. So, okay, do you think this point will be even? What did you think it will be stay there at the same time? No, because the angle of the stream will vary. So this will move. It's so easy. You see this, how this works when you have the little fly testing machine. This tip that is outside of the turbulent stream is swimming like this. Fantastic. And that's because of the cone. Okay, a lot of talk. I better put a little glue here. I use a little support. Put the glue a, a little bit away from my soft tackles. I don't want the, the glue to destroy everything. So I take this and I pick it up with the tying thread instead like that. Hold it a second or two. And uh, I don't know how many times I had the questions. When did you stop knots? And I stopped that many years ago. I don't think I've done a knot last 15 years pull it down like that i always do this away from the vise pull it use support what i do i use support on my finger to be able to cut this at the right place if i do it like this 
it, it, I can cut it everywhere, but I mean, this way, I can cut on half a millimeter right and do it like this. Okay, hold it up, take the magic lighter, and I'll just melt it. And I think it was a clever guy called Newton that found out that things want to go this way, okay? So, if I'll try to melt this this way, the plastic goes that way. But if I, I melt it like this, it opens like a little flower and I will get a nice little uh, head with a nice little hole for my leader, which could be good to have, you know, if you want to fish with the fly. Okay, I put it in my hand like this and I look underneath because what I don't want is the angel hair strands to be the longest strands because these have a tendency to tangle in the hook. Okay? I'll take that away too. Let's see now what we've done. We've tied a fly that have what I think is very important, a good drop form. It's fat here. The hackles have three different lengths where the shortest is in the front, the next is a little longer, and the third one is the longest one. The wings are tapered with the shortest in the bottom and they get longer and longer. And this way you can see here now, how this is a very thin, long, nice swimming point. Like that. <sighs> Remember now, you prepared when I destroy this fly. I wet it. Never do that before you're ready. But now you see what's gonna happen with this. How this will look like when it's get wet. It will lose like 30-40% of its volume and it will get this perfect shape. People say to me when I tie flies like this for an exhibition, when I wet them, they say, no, no, don't destroy it. But come on, it's a fishing fly, it should get wet. It's ridiculous, you know? But this is the way I think you can, you can uh, tie uh, any kind of fly, any kind of color combination, any size from like four centimeters up to how long you want it. I mean, my fish may be 20 biggest flies I fish. Uh, same thinking, same ideas, and you get some seriously good fishing flies, I think. Okay, so uh, hope you liked it. This is uh, one of my newer patterns. Uh, I call it um, In Flames. Um, it's got the name from, from the material, uh, from the SSS Hot Orange In Flames, but in Flames is also a good rock and roll band, and uh, maybe this is a, can give you some rock and roll that it's giving me. Under tricky conditions, when you have, uh, after a flood, when the water is dirty, clears up a little bit, maybe turning into like American coffee color, you know, weak coffee or hot, strong tea. Uh, these are the good colors. I mean, orange is always good in dirty water, uh, if you add a little magenta, magenta is on the purple side of the color scale, which means magenta will, will show in very bad light, very little light. With a little black back on there, you get a good contrast, which means you can fish it even when the water clears up a little bit. Good drop form. A uh, little bit of extra sound from the turbo disc and the, and the rubber legs. Normally I say I have four criteria. The first is, of course, move, should be soft. And from the fish perspective, look how wide this is, like this. The second one is the drop form. It should be heavy and tapering off with a thin point, like I showed you before, okay? The third thing is I want the fly to be translucent, like the dubbing. When I brush it out, the light comes through it, if you use a curly hair and you tie it in white like this, you look at this against the light and you can see how the light will come straight through the fly. The fourth thing I think is important is that the fly will reflect the light. 
and by that I mean that it will have a little bit of glitter and so inside of it. You know, of course, if it doesn't reflect light, we couldn't see it. But I mean the flashy boo. And I always put the heavy duty, the HD SSS underneath, and I put the regular angel hair quality inside the wing, not to interfere with the movement of the fly. So, a lot of talk, a lot of ideas, crazy thinking, but still, what I think, bloody good fishing flies. <laughs> Thank you.